Good morning. All right, so we have a brand new generation showing up in our workplace, the millennials, born between 1982 and 2000. And let me tell you, our phone is ringing every day because we've got traditionalists, the generation born pre-1946, the baby boomers, 46 to 64, and Generation Xers, 65 to 81, scratching their heads saying, who are these aliens? Who are the millennials? Well, 1982 to 2000, 80 million strong, and with the rate of immigration, which we heard about earlier, going the way it is, this will be the first generation to topple their parents' generation, the boomers, in terms of sheer numbers. Huge generation. And they're unique. This generation is truly rocking the workplace, and yet what we're so concerned about is we're seeing so many leaders and so many companies make a colossal mistake all over again. When my generation, Generation X, showed up in the workplace, what everyone did is we, they tried to treat us like the boomers. And let me tell you, it backfired. And it's amazing to us how many people are trying to treat the millennials like the previous generation. But boomers, we showed up and they were like, who are those aliens? Oh my God, these extras have spiked hair. They, they want to get to work at 10 o'clock. They want to bring their dog to work. Who are they? And everyone got so mad at us. And quickly, because we were doing things a little bit different, what they do? They call this grunge. They call this lazy. They call this slackers, bad work ethic. And boom, we were labeled. And it's amazing to us how people struggle with Gen X. I got to tell you, in the early 90s, we'd get these phone calls from people who are working with Gen Xers, and they'd be mumbling and grumbling, oh my god, this new generation, who are they, who are they? You're not going to believe what we are seeing. This new generation, get this, they are spending company time on the internet. Can you believe what they are doing? And companies rolled out these policies, well, we're not going to allow people on the internet. And it was amazing. And yet, people kaboom were crashing head on with the boomers. Now, imagine your day today if you weren't allowed to be on the internet. And thank God Gen Xers pushed for it because they took companies to whole new places. But I got to tell you, boomers did not like us. They struggled with us again and again and again. We think about boomers had created policies, procedures, rules, regulations, systems, protocols, you name it for how the workplace should operate. And then we came in and we challenged it. And suddenly boomers found their star extra employee walking into their office and saying, you know, I know the report's not due till 11 every day. If it's okay with you, I'm going to show up at 10, get a good workout in the morning, and I'll stay till 8 or 9. And boomers were like, oh, I, 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 I guess okay. I don't know what else to do. But kaboom, 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 we crashed and clashed and clashed again and again. But thank goodness we did. Because I have to tell you, you know what those clashes, you know what happened? All those arguments about being online, suddenly companies got on the information superhighway, and it took businesses to places people didn't even imagine. All those arguments over, hey, dude, I'm leaving at four for the t-ball game. Well, let me tell you, that led to some of the most progressive work-life initiatives that all of us are enjoying today. So here's what we don't get. A new generation shows up, and boom, we're making the colossal mistake all over again. Because I'm getting these phone calls. You're not going to believe this, but this guy that we call iPod Boy, every single day he spends the whole day on Facebook. Or we hear, oh, Sarah, this new intern, you know, can you believe at the CEO's town hall meeting when he asked if there was any questions or comments, she raised her hand. She'd been there three weeks. Is she crazy? <laughs> or we're hearing, oh, this new kid, we call him cargo pants kid, you know. He asked HR for another day off to go volunteer. He does know we're a for-profit, right? And people again and again complaining about him. And I got to tell you, leaders are calling me, politicians are calling, saying, who are these people? I don't get them. And people are struggling. In a national survey we ran three months ago, traditionalists, boomers, and Gen Xers unanimously cited the millennials as the, as the toughest generation to manage. Now, here's the funny part. 26% of millennials cited their own generation <laughs> as the toughest generation to manage. So here's the goal we have in a sh short amount of time. I need you to stop making this colossal mistake. You can't treat them like the generation that's gone before them. You need to do what eventually happened with Gen X and the boomers and traditionalists. We stopped fighting over who's right, who's wrong, who's better, who's worse. And what did we do? We said, okay, we're different. Now let's figure out how we can work with these differences. And it's worked. So how do we get to know these millennials? Well, for a lot of us, it shouldn't be that hard. 
because it's so close to home. The parents of this generation, the ones raising them, are the baby boomers. And if you don't think the boomers, the most competitive, hardworking, idealistic, optimistic generation is going to take a vested interest in the outcome of their children, guess again. This generation of boomers is hands-on when it comes to parenting. We've heard it. It's not news. The whole helicopter generation and how they're coddled and whatnot. But I've got to tell you, before we criticize the boomers for this, we asked the millennials, who are your heroes? Top of the chart, I mean by a landslide victory, mom and dad. We've never seen this before. Previous generations, what did they say? Political figures, military figures, sports figures, athletes, religious figures, you name it. But we never saw mom and dad. And I think this is so cool. Because this is what's so strange to us. This connection that can take place at home is definitely not happening at the office. And what's so ironic to me There's all these leaders who are calling me and complaining and saying, who are this generation? I can't stand them. They're just so hard. These are the very same people who are raising them at home. And yet there's this big disconnect. I'm going to give you an example. A loaded word we hear in every workplace today, collaboration. It's probably on half of your websites, in your brochures, your mission statements. Loaded word. What company doesn't want to be collaborative and foster great teamwork, right? Well, heads up. Because collaboration is going to a whole new level with the millennials. It's like collaboration on steroids. This generation wants to be in your office 12 times a day, have meetings morning, noon, and night. They want to stay in touch with you. They're going to be in your office. And why would I want my own office with a door? And I hate these cubicle walls. Let's take them down. Let's move together. We'll sit in pods. It's a big teamwork city. And the other generations are like, OK, collaboration is great. But I got to tell you, it's like a big kumbaya chat room around here. This just doesn't feel right to me. But these same people who are complaining to us need to stop and back up. Let's look at how we're raising them at home. This is a generation that's being raised by extremely communicative boomer parents where we're all going to sit around the dinner table. The family will give its input. The family will take a vote. And then we'll decide how you should be punished. <laughs> Class is being taught in eighth grade this year. Conflict resolution, mediation, and team building. You go to any college or university and every project is done in a group, group, group. This is also a generation that's used to having a voice. If you think about it, they can have access to anyone they want. Professors give them their private email. Coaches give them their cell phone number. So to them, of course, they can ping the CEO to talk about the new strategic plan he's rolling out. They've had a voice and they've had access to everyone. But what's so hard is most companies are still operating under this traditionalist model that traditionalists put forth for us. But that model made sense for them. Traditionalists were the World War II generation. It was command and control. So the model that they set forth was, if I say jump, you say? Okay. Well, now you say jump to a millennial, and what do they say? Why? <laughs> That too, but <laughs> they say, why? Or they say, oh, you know, jumping's bad for my knees. I don't want to jump. And they push back. And whoa, what do we do? We're so quick to label them. Just like when Gen X did something that we didn't like, we labeled them. We're labeling this generation. Now, I'm constantly hearing every single day how this generation is so entitled. This is the entitled generation. Really? I mean, that stings. Boomers hated when we called them workaholics. Xers hated being called slackers. And here I boom, just labeling this generation as entitled. And I got to tell you, I'm not so sure that's the case. Now, I'm not saying watching millennials ask for something a little bit earlier than the rest of us did doesn't sting a little bit. But still, I'm going to push hard. I'm not so, so sure this is entitled. And again, those of you calling them entitled, we're also telling this generation, you have a voice. It's a very, very special voice. You should speak up. Your ideas matter. These should be heard. Just not in my office, okay? <laughs> This doesn't make sense to us. Should we be really that surprised that they show up at work and expect to pipe in and be involved in every single decision going on today? I'm going to ask you a question. How many of you growing up got to plan your family vacations? No one. Now, meanwhile, all the kids piping in from the university are like, duh. Guess who the number one planner of family vacations was last year? Millennials. Boomers were way too burnt out. They're like, okay, look, 
Heaven knows what your schedule is. Here's my schedule. Mom and I both want to play golf. We seem to all be on the same page with the weather. Here's the budget. Why don't you tell me where we can go? We did work with MLS. When a family's looking for a new house, they call it the frontline click when someone's looking for a new house. Who's doing it? Millennials, same thing. Boomers are like, you know the neighborhoods, you know the school district we want, you know the price range. Why don't you tell me what homes are available? I'd be willing to bet none of you would ever go to Best Buy to get a big screen TV or a new computer and not bring a millennial along. <laughs> right? So then they show up and they want to be you know, reviewing the new strategic plan and we're thinking, you've been here three weeks, buddy. And he's thinking, dude, I just bought my dad a house. What's the big deal? <laughs> and again, <laughs> what we need to do where we see leaders making the biggest mistake is they don't differentiate between making a decision and giving input. Everyone says, oh, they're so entitled, they expect to be making these big decisions when they've only been here three weeks. Millennials don't expect to be making decisions. They just want to be involved. They know that mom and dad decided where we go on vacation. They know mom and dad had the final say in what house we buy. They know mom and dad decide what big screen TV we're ultimately going to get. But you better bet those kids were all the more engaged and excited because they were involved. Well, the same thing goes on at work. They know their bosses get to make decisions, but they just want to be involved. And what do we do? We call them entitled. What smart leaders are doing, they're inviting that voice to the table. They want to know what millennials have to say. And smart leaders are looking for all sorts of ways to gather. We're seeing internal social networks. Tools like creative producers groups have Vidzu TV. Go to vidzutv.com. So cool. Internal YouTube system where you can capture everyone's ideas. It's progressive systems like this that we need, where we all need to be capturing their ideas. Because innately, we know that they have them. In that survey we just ran, 92%. 92% of traditionalist boomers and Xers gave millennials the highest mark for the ability to create and innovate. So we know they can, but then they try and we call them entitled. Or we roll up our eyes and we say, who are these people? So we try to invite that voice to the table. And for those of you who are still so quick to call them entitled, I've got a big idea that I think is worth spreading, and that is stop using the word entitled and maybe use the word engaged.